Good day folks, I'd like to show you some circuits here that we can use and, and ideas for the uh, PEG uh, power cell as a uh, DC um, circuit block essentially uh, keeping the dipole open. If you don't know what I'm talking about, please uh, refer to the earlier videos with the full explanation. I'll have the link in the descriptions for that so you can understand what I'm talking about. So here I offer a different approach, which is similar, taking advantage of the peg cell as keeping the dipole open. So basically a kind of glorified or simplified um, crystal-like radio system here, where you have a full bridge rectifier system with an antenna here, and then connect it to ground. This gives you a plus and minus. Now, <clears throat> others must have uh, experimented with the antenna energy harvesters before I have myself. And they work pretty good and you can get a pretty high potential but the problem with them is there's so little current that the people even myself just trying to charge even like a 10 nf capacitor basically is enough to load it and it nullifies the effect and the capacitor essentially has a hard time charging unless you're like you know 10 feet away from the transmitter kind of deal but um what i've noticed is um in part because i'm a ham operator so i've experimented with a lot of the wavelengths and radio communications is um the best for harvesting is uhf directional yagi antennas because on the uhf systems you have a lot of power it could be like 100 watts or more for public services uh, you have the televisions which could be thousands of watts so essentially What's good for this, as long as you live maybe half a mile from a high power location, you know about it, you point your Yagi to that. And what it's gonna, gonna do is give you, I've experienced, you know, f over 48 volts at half a mile from the transmitter with a properly configured Yagi. But the issue is there's no current behind it. You can't really do with it much. I tried to use it to charge cap dumps and whatnot. And, it's like the Tesla idea where even the environment, the higher you go, you get an incredible potential, but there's just no current. Uh, you, you know what I mean? Try it out yourself. So um, one way to uh, everybody's looking at this going, what is he getting at? Well, what happens with here is you see we run our peg cell as the DC isolating loop. It charges a capacitor. And we have an SCR switch. I just simplified it. It could be anything you want. But this is self-triggered. And then the charging battery here once it reaches the trigger. Now, what's important is uh, what happens with this is it takes the uh, load because off the traditional closed loop. So what I'm getting at is this system here won't short out the ambient energy harvesters like it does. Essentially, this works well. It's kind of like a classic reactive power supply where you get all these VAR uh, energies, but as soon as you touch it, right? This prevents that from happening. So you're get, taking advantage. Let's say you're getting 48 volts plus whatever your peg cell is given one volt. So let's say 50 volts now you have of pure potential and the charging mechanism won't kill the dipole like it normally would when everyone traditionally tries to run this energy harvesting through a closed loop. So I'm not sure if you guys are following me, but this is a much more efficient way if you have the means and nearby RF, a lot of people do. This is a way of taking advantage of the radiant energy as an open loop harvester rather than a closed loop. So for those who understand that this is big, this means a lot. So, um, of course, not everybody lives near RF. So there's an alternative solution for that. And of course, there's nothing wrong with the basic one that I've shown in the previous video, but it's just extending upon that idea and incorporating it in traditional systems that we've experimented with before, that all of a sudden now the dynamics change if you can truly keep the loop open. Yet these devices, depending on the way they're configured, will still work as intended. So um, I will then proceed to if you do not have RF, another setup you can try. So I'm just going to move on to that right now. All right, folks, here's a version of the open loop radiant energy 
converter. If you don't have RF nearby, you could still take advantage of the Earth's radiant energy instead here. So we start off here. This is a bit more complicated circuit using a MOSFET switch. So you're going to have to have a little bit, a small startup charge. That could be a small battery that will run for a month, whatever. It could even be rechargeable with wind, solar, or even a self loop once you get it going. So what the MOSFET does is here we have our earth batteries plus negative here. So you have the earth batteries. So what it does is it switches the path A and the path B through a L1 coil here. So what happens is we have our regular charging capacitor and when the MOSFET switches the path. So during path A we got the, the negative of the PEG cell. And we have to make sure, folks, that it's fully electrically isolated, no continuity whatsoever, or else you lose that open loop effect, but it still needs to put out a small potential. So the negative connects through the switch, the switch uh, switches the negative path A, path B. So the path A is right here through the coil going back into the capacitor here. So what happens is, you know, you've got one side negative and one side positive here. And then there's an SCR dump, and that can go back to the front controller's capacitor or, or best charging battery. And then it switches the path B, which goes to the plus, so it puts it in series with the air battery, negative through the coil and back into the SCR. So by continuously switching it like this, you get a continuous displacement that could charge this capacitor over here and you introduce modulated current and AC output on the L2 coil. So your, your official load or charging batteries can be outputted over here. So this is a very interesting setup and much more efficient if you want to give it a try. And it would obviously work with the... Um, and what happens if you've watched my earlier videos, um, when we introduce a ground to a coil that's pulsing for a moment and you also pulse the ground you get a big spike so this would also mimic naturally the pulsing into the ground which will introduce that additional spike into the system it's a bonus for that moment why not so uh, putting all these concepts together this is a little bit more of a complicated one and um it basically folks it allows us to kind of do what don smith was doing he has the ion valve, but the thing is the ion valve is good at high voltage in a way that it will ionize the air, okay? But ionized air is great and all that, but it won't really do anything very much on its own unless you basically have um, a compatible system to take advantage of that. So um, if people who experiment with the ion valves see that, you know, charged up ions can create a localized electrostatic effect. So you get a new electrostatic effect. It's uh, through the ionization of the air with the high voltage. So essentially, um, this is why at high voltage, what I'm getting at is you don't need the peg because it's the ionization of the high voltage that gives it a, a new potential in the output of the ion valve. So what happens is um, you don't need the peg at high voltages, but what I guess um, the, what Don Smith doesn't necessarily say is even that high voltage to have the maximum effect, the two electrodes in the ion valve should be still of dissimilar metals to, to, to get that, that greater electrostatic effect. So it's one thing to ionize the air, but you can do something with that. We, let's treat the air like the actual electrolyte and make that our cell. So I think maybe the Don Smith leave that little part out intentionally. I don't know, but to my mind, it would just make a lot more sense all of a sudden to use this ion valve concept at high voltage, but the electrodes are separate metals. Now this opens up the uh, possibility of experimenting with a lot of Don Smith concepts but at much lower voltages as long as you've got the peg here because that'll give you your electrostatic DC. We call it electrostatic in the sense that it's very uh, low current like one milliamp or so but it will show up as DC. It does the job of, of 
closing our traditional current closed DC path and it gives us enough of a potential that a circuit will see it as a regular DC output source so you can series that like we're doing here. So um, I hope that I'm giving you folks some good ideas here and um, ex explaining you know some of the details of course this is going further with the concept it'll work for experimentation going back to the original one I'll have a link in my comments uh, I mean in the uh, description to refer to the first video if people are not too sure what I'm talking about here or don't get it right from the surface. There's a lot going on with the PEG cell. It's DC isolating the traditional current path. So this is the open loop dipole concept from Tom Bearden, but allowing us to work with it in more um, practical applications instead of having to use hundreds of thousands of volts if you want to do that, that's fine, but this opens up another path now. So with that said, folks, I hope I'm putting pieces together and always looking forward to your comments. Thank you.